Hi, it's Rob Moore here, and I am on the Brand and Marketing Masterclass. Here we all are again. And, woo! yeah, go on, big woo! Woo! <laughs> Mwah. All right, so I've been asked a very, very pertinent question, which I think you can get big value from for 2020 for your branding, sales, marketing, growth. Yeah, perfect. Uh, and that is uh, LinkedIn. So... LinkedIn is probably the one, one of the most level playing field social media platforms that you're going to use next year. Key reason why is because it will not restrict your reach like many of the other platforms. So you could have 10 followers and have a post that has two and a half million views. If you had 10 followers on Facebook, you might get two views. So definitely you want to look, look big into LinkedIn for 2020. Now, I've been asked how to leverage it, how to use it, how to maximise it, and I'm going to spend you know, 10 or 15 minutes detailing that for you. All right, so um, first things first, I've done so much testing on LinkedIn and other social media platforms, so I'm just going to give you the results of a load of my tests. You can ask me to um, detail it if you want, or you can just take my word for it, it's up to you. So first thing is, I am finding maximum benefit from posting once a day. Now, I've tried once a week, I've tried three times a week, I've tried twice a day. Twice a day, my reach was going down quite a lot. Three times a week, four times a week, five times a week, the reach was getting better and better and better. Now, for LinkedIn, and actually all the social media platforms, you have to get ego and vanity out of the way. So it's not about how much reach each post gets. It's about the total reach you get. Now, obviously, you'd like to have posts that get good reach. You'd like to have your commercial posts that have good reach. But I would rather have two posts that get 5,000 views, totaling 10, than one post that gets 8,000 views. Because the total views or reach, I believe to be more important. So what I found is, as I went to one a day, each post maybe was slightly lower in the reach. But because I was posting one a day, not three a week then I was getting more total increase in reach. Now, here's how you measure it. On your dashboard, you have a number of people who view your profile. I think it's per month. You just go to, um, essentially, your dashboard. Um, I think you click under your name, and it'll give you your recent post, how many views it's had so far, and it'll give you how many views your profile has had. That's not reach in that month. It's how many views your profile has had. Now, as long as that's going up, then you're all good. It's weird, but um, on the Facebook Live, so some people have been not getting any sound, but some people have. Can you just let me know in the uh, comments if you've got sound or not? That'd be good, useful. I'll give that feedback to Facebook. Um, okay, so you want to get to the point where you're doing one post a day. Now, don't be scared by that. If you're doing one post a week, just up it to two a week for a few weeks. Then up it to three a week for a few weeks. Actually, incrementally upping your volume of posts is probably going to be better than going from never to every day. Probably. Because one a day sometimes scares people. Okay, the next thing is, to a certain degree, you can repurpose content from your Facebook posts to your LinkedIn posts and vice versa. So to get started... Just get content up there. Go back through all the Facebook posts or other media or blogs or articles you've written in the past. And ones that have got half decent engagement, just post it on LinkedIn. It's new on LinkedIn. All right, next then is, this is the same for most social media platforms. But I know this to be the case from LinkedIn. You'll never know exactly how or why, but this is still standing the, the test of time. And I found this out a few months ago. The first hour is the most important time for you to get engagement in your posts, whether that's likes, comments, shares, and also clicks on documents. I'll, I'll explain that in a moment. So as much as you can, engage in your posts in the first hour. Now, something that will give you, in total, dramatically more reach on all your social media platforms is if you do this one simple tip, and it's really simple. Every time you post on social media, not necessarily in a group, 
but on a page or on a profile, keep them the hour immediately after it relatively free so you can engage on your post. Because what a lot of people do is they post and then they bugger off and go and do some work. And that makes total sense, doesn't it? Except if the first hour is the most important for your engagement. Essentially what happens is you'll make a post. LinkedIn will probably share it to about three-ish percent of your audience automatically. And then as there's more engagement, it will go wider, wider, wider. And your engagement counts. I'm told between five and seven words constitutes an engagement. Obviously a like does, you know, or a, a heart or one of the symbols that they do. Um, but if you just go, thank you, that's two words. That's not enough to constitute a comment. So you want to do five, seven, eight words. I think it's really important to tag the person in that you're applying to so then they can see it in their feed when they click all activity. So you can go on your dashboard, you click all activity and it shows you all the posts that you've commented in as well as your own. So you're far more likely to get them to come back and engage. Now, a lot of people are scared about critics. For reach and engagement on your posts, your critics are your best friends. <coughs> so if someone critics or challenges, uh, thank them and ask them to expand on what fuck off means. <laughs> <laughs> Please, could you define wanker? Because it has multiple meanings in the UK. <laughs> uh, and you know, sometimes you just want to get them off expanding. Other times you want to challenge them. So sometimes you'll see me on social media sort of stoking the fire. Other times you'll see me, um, you know, thanking them and being grateful. Sometimes you'll, you'll see me getting them to clarify. And other times you will see me intentionally having a bit of a pop with them. Because I know they're going to come back and they're going to come back and they're going to come back. There was, I did a post about, um, basically I've been let down by quite a few female speakers. Yeah, I saw that. And many of you saw that. And one woman got really pissed off. I mean, a few women got really pissed off. Um, interestingly, no men got pissed off. Um, but one, one woman got really pissed off and went and commented on nearly every comment. And then when someone disagreed with me, she went and going, yeah! And, and like most people would be like, oh, look, I'm getting trolled. This is horrible. I'm like, thank you. I should be paying her. This is brilliant. So the reach grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. Okay, right. Um, next then is hot right now. And this is very new. And I've just tested it is posting a document. So you've got uh, posts, articles, videos, and documents are so the four different types of posts you can do on LinkedIn. And if you post a document as a PDF, it will automatically take each page that goes down like that, it will turn it vertical, and it will make each page a slide. And each click has an engagement score. So I'll tell you, the, I, I literally learned this last week. Uh, it's very new. And I've just tried it. I've done one post, post in a day. It's got 12,000 views, which is actually now about three times as much as my average live is getting on LinkedIn. And, and everyone's like dying for live. So what, I, I've just written a, a piece of content called The 14 Ways to Create Passive Recurring Income. So like a book royalty, fan funding, writing a Christmas number one, you know, that's obviously a good way to create passive income. Look at Slade, <laughs> they are milking it in, passive income. So what you do, you keep this really simple, by the way, you, you get a Word document, you write 14 ways to create passive recurring income, and then you put one, book royalties, aud Audible and Amazon. Two, uh, music or songs. Three, intellectual property. Four, a franchise. And you literally just eat per each post per each point per page. You PDF it, you upload it as a document, it takes it into a slideshow, and each click across gives you an engagement score, which increases your reach. And of course, if you've written 14 ways to create passive income, obviously someone's going to go click, 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 because they're going to want to see them. No one fucking knows this. this is, I just got goosebumps for you. Right, everyone, Jamie, everyone's going to like fuck the course off and go, and go and create PDFs for LinkedIn. All right, so you heard this from the horse's mouth. Um, so that's big. Uh, with LinkedIn, I think a good strategy is as follows. Now, look, it's not exact, but... I would say once a week, try and create an, engage, uh, an engagement jacking post. 
once a week, a story type of post, then maybe four times a week, pure content in your niche, and then once a week, some kind of call to action. I think, I think that's a good rolling week strategy. So one post a day. I'll explain engagement checking in a bit in case you don't know what it is. And by the way, some people on the uh, live have said, I'll go and do it now. Don't do it now. I'm finished. Do it when I finish the live. And a lot of people pay a lot of money for information that's not as good as this. Whack, whacking my finger at you. Okay, so um, an engagement jacking post would be posting on the AJ fight. By the way, if you post on boxing, on UFC, you know, when it's really big, you get loads of engagement. Or when Tyson Fury got knocked out, I got one and a half million views. Um, if you post about cars, because, you know, you get a lot of the critics, and oh, it's not all about cars and houses. Um, I've just posted one, which I think will go quite wild on um, LinkedIn. If there's anything major in the news, if Brexit is at its fever pitch, something that's posted purely to get engagement. So it could be creating an argument, a debate, polarising people, etc. And it doesn't have to be on brand because those posts go the most viral. And what they are for you is it's like opening up a wormhole so that the world can see you. Because if you post about your supporters page or your company or trying to get them to opt in or your podcast, that doesn't get as much reach. So that is to open the, the, the wormhole world up so that the world can see you. And um, I, I did a post on the four year anniversary of me crashing my Ferrari into that building over there. And that's had over 400,000 views. I've got 600 new followers from that in the first two days because we count, we track. So that's good. I mean, if I was doing um, lead generation, I'd pay five pound minimum a lead. That cost me three grand to get 600. So I've, I've basically got 3,000 pounds worth of followers. Is that right, three grand? Yeah. Okay, so then your um, second post is kind of a story. So you know, 10 years ago, I was really struggling as an artist. I got into property. I met my business partner at my first property networking event. We got on well. We used his money, my energy and enthusiasm. Fast forward now, I own, co-own and manage 850 properties. We built Progressive, blah, blah, blah. And, and you tell a story about you or your business or your brand, your product story, your brand story, your story, some kind of story. Stories work really well on LinkedIn, by the way, really well. And then four times is content. Content on your niche. So I've just told you um, 14 ways to create passive income is content. Um, I could talk about entrepreneurship, be early but not first. Um, I could talk about the 20 things I've learned about business for 2020. That's content. Now, with LinkedIn, you've got 1,200 and something characters, so you have to keep it quite snappy. It's actually good because it, it makes you practice writing snappy content. And what we're finding is written content is, on average, getting more reach than video content. Now... Next, sorry if I'm going fast, but I want to get you as much as possible. Um, with videos, two to three minutes seems to be the ideal length. LinkedIn give you up to 10, but two to three minutes seems to be the ideal length to get the maximum engagement and, and reach. So probably don't do too much more. In all video, and a lot of people don't do this, it's really important to get engaged straight away. Hi, it's Rob. I've got 14 ways to share with you how to create passive income, recurring income. Some people say there's no such thing as passive income. I say they don't know how. Step one. So that was about eight seconds. And I've already told you what's in the video and given you a little bit of a tagline that maybe creates some interest. Whereas what a lot of people just go live and go... Hi, David. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Rick. And click on bugger off. You don't want that. Straight in. You know, I do this. Now, a lot of people do that, so I do this. When you see everyone doing this, I'll be doing this. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do we got next on LinkedIn? You have a, a score on LinkedIn. I forget. Uh, the, um, there's like a, a URL you can go to, and LinkedIn give you a score. 
Um, and of course, putting content out there will increase your score, but engaging with other people will also increase your score. And when you're a content marketer, you tend to put content out, but not so much engage in other people's stuff. So once or twice a day, scroll down the feed and engage in some posts, just when you're bored or you know, when you've got a little spare five or 10 minutes or something like that. I tend to scroll and look for posts and people that have a lot of engagement themselves and comment on those. Next thing is, in LinkedIn, you can search by job title or search by the keywords that they've put underneath their name on their LinkedIn profile. So when you're adding connections, make sure you only add and accept connections in your niche. So a lot of people just add and accept random connections. I stopped doing that years ago. In fact, I maxed out at 30,000 connections, so I've been spending two or three days with my outsourcer cleaning my connections list. You know, so if someone is an IT software or an accountant or something, I'm unconnecting them, unless I feel like they're following me. Because I'm looking for CEOs, entrepreneurs, business owners, founders, co-founders. That's who I'm looking for, startups. And I'm clear on that. So if you're looking for entrepreneurs and startups, you can go and search entrepreneur in LinkedIn and all the profiles with people who've got entrepreneur on their profile will come up. That's what it, that's what it is, thanks Darren, it's an SSI score. There's four different criteria at which it measures you your SSI score. And my guess is the higher the score, I think it's a bit of gamification, so I think they're doing that to keep you addicted to the platform. But my guess is the higher the score, the more reach you're gonna get. It's all about reach on these social media platforms. Are we recording this, by the way? Damn it. This would have been a good podcast. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, could pull it off there, maybe, if the audio is good enough. Uh, anything else on LinkedIn? Oh, your profile. So, your profile should state how you help and serve your ideal niche. The profile on LinkedIn is really good because it's very detailed. And all the stuff that you can fill in, the links, the past, present uh, jobs or roles you've had, you want to fill it in. And on that profile, you can uh, link to your podcast, you can link to your YouTube video or, or channel. So make sure that profile is really well populated. Recommendations. Because LinkedIn is a kind of online CV, which is unique to any other social media platform, uh, you want to make sure that you build your recommendations up. Uh, with Amazon reviews, podcast reviews, Facebook page reviews, Trustpilot reviews, LinkedIn reviews. I think once you get past 50, 100, whatever, it kind of doesn't really matter. But if you've got one review on your LinkedIn profile, that's a bit bare. So I've always had a challenge of mine. Oh, hi, Sam. Uh, Sam Raffling, by the way, knows her shit about LinkedIn. So you should definitely follow her on LinkedIn. Just plugged you there, Sam. You need to pay me. <laughs> um, She's always using me as a case study for people who do LinkedIn well. But I've just figured it out uh, accidentally over the years by just pissing around with it. I'm actually um, talking to Sam about her, giving me and my team some training to go to the next level. Investing in yourself is vital. People think I've got to where I am and I don't invest in myself anymore. But, you know, Sam will tell you, we're talking about a deal which is in the tens of thousands of uh, training for my company uh, on LinkedIn and for me. Because you, you just, if you know 5% more than everyone else, you get 5,000% more results than everyone else. So it's, it's really important. Um, so yeah, so recommendations. So Sam nudged me a couple of weeks ago. She said, Rob, um, you know, you should be getting more recommendations on LinkedIn because, you know, we, I do it for um, my podcast and I do it for my book. But if you go and leave people recommendations, it private messages them that they've got a recommendation from you and they're likely to reciprocate. So people you know, go and recommend them on LinkedIn. Do two a day. 
Now I've worked out a little hack here because I, when I learn stuff like this, hopefully you are, I get really excited. I'm like, right, but I'm you know, really growing my influence on LinkedIn. And then I start doing it all and I'm like, man, this is a load of work. <laughs> Going and leaving recommendations and reviews every day, load of work. Going and cleaning my connections, a load of work. So my son is eight. Uh, and I'm going to write a rough template for a recommendation and I'm sitting him down today and I'm going to teach him how to go and do a recommendation and I'm going to leave a list of a load of people I'm going to get him to do some recommendations for me. And then my connections have got maybe, yeah, I think they're 29,600 now because I'm cleaning them. Because the problem is when you max with connections and people add you, you can't accept them. It's like when you're maxed on Facebook friends. So you don't actually want to be at 5,000, even though your vanity likes it. You want to be at 4,800. So you can still accept the people you want to accept. So I'm going to get him to scroll through all my connections, all 30,000. And anyone that doesn't have CEO, entrepreneur, founder, business owner, etc. in the title, I'm going to get him to remove the connection. I'm going to pay him 20 pence per. Although I took him to golf yesterday, he fucking got another hole in one. <laughs> so that's nine hole in ones. Um, we were talking in the car. We haven't really been on the course for ages. And I, was, I, I like teaching him about money. So I told him, hey, Bobby, do you know your Krugerrands have gone up? Um, he's got Krugerrands because he gets Krugerrand every time he gets a hole in one. And I said to him, do you know what Krugerrands are worth? And he went, yeah, 850 pounds. And I went, no, no, they were when I was getting them for you. They're now worth 1150 pounds. He's like, oh, mine have gone up. <laughs> He said, can we go down the golf course because I want to win another one. I'm like, yeah, you're never going to win one. Banged a hole in one. Uh, so he won 1,150 quid. And then he, he hit one of the balls into this ditch, probably about 30 yards away from the, um, from the hole. And he said, what do I get if I chip this in? I'm like, you're never chipping it in. 50 quid. Bang, chipped it straight in. <laughs> Nothing but cup. Nothing but cup is when it just lands straight in the hole. <laughs> Little <Yeah>. bastard. <laughs> So he won 1,250 quid off me yesterday. So he's going to come to me going, 20p per connection. It's not enough. Go down the golf. Exactly. Um, which is good psychology, reverse psychology. But yeah, I want to you, you, figure it out yourself and then get your kids to do it or get an outsourcer to do it or a VA to do it. You know, all the manual stuff. Okay, cool. Um, anything else for LinkedIn? Sam, have you got any suggestions on some top tips that I should be telling everyone on LinkedIn? Um, Sam is one of the go-to people for LinkedIn. Uh, Aaron, definitely you could be leveraging LinkedIn for your... Um, Aaron's Bobby's golf coach. Um, yes? If you've got another job... If you've got another job... If you've got a job... Yeah. Um, and so your LinkedIn profile is kind of tied to your Get job, it, get it. What, yeah. what else can you do? Because I'd yeah. be very reluctant to okay. do this on... But I really want to make use of LinkedIn. Yeah, so if you have another job, and so you went on LinkedIn going, <laughs> sack your boss, yeah. my new audio program, <laughs> uh, then of course you've got to be careful. Yeah. So I think it's very wise to talk to your manager or your boss or your employer, read your employment contract and work out what it says you can and can't do. Uh, and if it were me, I would go to my boss and say, hey, look, I'm committed to the company. Um, I also invest in property and I just want to let you know that evenings and weekends I do that in case you see stuff on LinkedIn or you hear people talking about it. Just wanted to let you know. Mm. Yeah. Now, look, I, I personally think that's the best way. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I don't think you shouldn't talk about what you're doing outside of work mm. because you can do what you want outside of work. I block my boss. You blocked your boss. <laughs> I like it. Or block your boss. <laughs> yeah. Block your boss. Yeah. <laughs> The thing is, you can block anyone, uh, but people in other people who follow yeah, you will yeah. find out and let them know. But yeah, I've got a lot of people in my staff who don't um, accept my request on Facebook, <laughs> for example. <laughs> yeah. Cool, any other questions on LinkedIn? Let's see if Sam's given us any tips. Less times of day, etc. So Sam, Sam has uh, written prospecting in exact target market. So I guess that means finding your niche through search on LinkedIn. She's put content themes. So what do you mean by that, Sam? I mean, for me, content is all about on brand, but also content that works on your brand. Uh, and, and for me, the best way to find out if content works on brand is to do Google and YouTube keyword research. So if you go on Google 
and YouTube and keyword research titles in your niche, it will give you related searches. And the related searches that have the highest volume, I'm then going to tweak my content related to that. I'll give you an example. I post loads on, entrepreneur loads on entrepreneurship. But I've never done a piece of content called the truth about entrepreneurship. But on YouTube, that's the highest entrepreneur search phrase that we could find. Now, I've got 12 tips on entrepreneurship. I could pull them out of my hat anytime. But it's better to say 12, true, 12 truths about entrepreneurship. So that's a very semantic difference, but a big difference because that's what's searched for a lot more on LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, Google, etc. Tony's put here, give your boss some property tips. Yeah. <laughs> uh, get JV Finance yeah. off of them. Okay, so Sam has said, never, never sell. Build relationships, add value, give, give, give. Um, I'm going to challenge that. Uh, and everyone is entitled to my opinion. Um, but in all seriousness, I think rarely sell or have a 10 to 1 or a 25 to 1 value to sale ratio, but I wouldn't say never sell because I'd never say never. Uh, on LinkedIn, on the 2nd of January, I launched my brand new marketing mastermind. I got a quarter of my leads from LinkedIn, a quarter from Facebook, a quarter from Instagram, and a quarter from the database. And I reckon 30% of the 75 sales at five grand I did was from LinkedIn. Now, what I did was a, bit, a, a video about it asking them to private message me and I would share with them a link to an application form. So it was a sell, but it wasn't a sell sell. So I guess it was a, a second stage sell or a softer sell. Maybe that's what Sam means. But hey, look, that, let's say that's 35 at five grand. That's probably a good piece of evidence to say not to never sell. But what I like to do on LinkedIn and Facebook and most social media platforms is just lots of content. And then when I do a pitch, it's actually just to get people into what you'd call the top of the funnel. So on my, get them on my podcast, get them on my YouTube channel, get them on the email database. So not sell a two grand course or a 10 grand mentorship. Instead, get them at an event or onto a different platform. Now, yeah, look, if you do value, 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 and you grow and you grow and you grow and you grow and your platform is well populated, you're going to get trickle down leads and revenue for sure. But your funnel and your architecture and your customer journey needs to be really good, really deep and really well tested all through the conversion points. Otherwise, they're just going to fall out into the ether. Uh, so Sam said, yeah, that's called driving inbound leads. So an offer to message me or to go to an application is driving an inbound lead. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, Amy's just said, sold it to us, as in she's on the marketing mastermind from LinkedIn. By the way, and this was a really fascinating test. I, I rarely, if ever, do the selling for my company because I've got 85 staff and I don't need to and I've got my brand that I'm building. But on this marketing mastermind launch, which I did 2nd to 4th of January last year, 4th of January is my birthday. I only came up with the idea on the 2nd after watching the McQueen documentary. And I did it on the 4th, and I, I think 4th was maybe the first day back in the office, or maybe the 5th was the first day back in the office, I can't remember. But the point is, I didn't have enough time to build a plan so my sales team could phone all the leads. So I just thought, fuck it, I'm doing it myself. And actually, I like getting on the ground every now and again. David Lloyd, who I interviewed, you know, he's got David Lloyd gyms. He's like, he goes in his gyms and speaks to his members. Alfie Best, who's on the Times Rich List, his company's worth 700 million. He's got a helicopter and he flies from mobile home park to mobile home park to mobile home park to talk to his clients and customers. And every now and again, I like to do the same. So I did all the calls myself. The hardest to convert were Instagram, the easiest to convert were LinkedIn. All the LinkedIn guys were just like, yeah, take my money, pretty much. Whereas the Instagram guys were like trying to get a lot of information out of me and they were way less sticky in terms of a lead. Now, you could argue I built a lot of goodwill on LinkedIn by doing a lot of content because that was my first proper offer for many years on LinkedIn. Yeah, which is why building the goodwill works. Okay, great. All good for LinkedIn? Giving Thank you some you. stuff to think about. Absolutely. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. And follow me on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one more tip. There's always more. 
uh, a great way to figure out what works on LinkedIn. This is common sense. This is so simple. You'll kick yourself as to why you don't do it more. Is follow top influencers on LinkedIn and watch what they do. And over time, you'll figure out what works and what doesn't by modelling what they do. Every time I see a really engaged post on LinkedIn, I save it. I'm never copying it, but I'm learning from it. Now, by the way, if someone's got 10 million followers and they get 200 comments, that's not engaged. If they've got 1,000 followers and they get 50 comments, that's engaged. So it's not just about the size of the following, or sorry, the size of the comments. It's about relative to how many followers they have. So every time I see 50 comments, I'll quickly click their profile and look at how many followers they've got. Because remember, LinkedIn gives you the most level playing field. All right, thanks everyone. Remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.